Hey everyone, hey PDJ, PDJ, we are live for PDJ. Um, hopefully everyone is uh, being able to, uh, you know, where everyone's able to join us. Sorry, a little problem with um, Instagram. I don't know why at times, but that's okay, that's okay. We're, we're gonna get it here, we're gonna get it here. We are starting up, amen, there we are. We're live on Instagram, hallelujah. So welcome to PDJ, everyone. What is PDJ? I'm glad you asked. PDJ is prayer, devotion, and journaling. Prayer, devotion, and journaling. Uh, I believe that we should have a lifestyle of prayer, devotion, and journaling. Uh, it's important. Amen. It, it's important. And I like coming to you every Tuesday at 12 o'clock with PDJ. Just a quick uh, jump in the scripture, quick thought of the day. Um, let's dive in and, and uh, digest uh, God's word. I, I just, I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of God's word. And it's sad because there's a lot of times that life gets busy and it's God's word that is put off to the side. I'm just being honest with you uh, because life gets busy and it, but I enjoy it. I love it. And I've got to always draw myself back to that. Um, and I hope that you do as well, because I understand that life gets busy and especially the holidays are right around the corner. Uh, we have Thanksgiving coming up. We have um, Christmas coming up. So I, I know that, that there's a lot of things that, that's going to be taking place. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you stay tuned. Uh, also, just a reminder, no game changers or uh, the view this month in, uh, uh, in November. Uh, we're going to have Christmas party though stay tuned for the dates stay tuned for the dates for Hanukkah I'm excited about Hanukkah there's so much more coming up so um, I'm just I'm excited so hopefully you guys are enjoying the series that uh, that we're, we are in right now life stuff uh, to me I love it I love it it's things that we deal with with life and it's things that we go through it's life stuff that's what we deal with so um, but let's jump into PDJ prayer devotion and journaling and and I titled it Rightly Dividing, and I want us to really um, understand uh, this scripture, and I know that a lot of you have probably already said, I know exactly where he's going, uh, 2 Timothy you know, 2.15, and you are right, but there's a few things I want us to understand within the scripture, and um, how we approach God, and how we come to God um, in order to rightly divide the word, and uh, we hear this all the time, you know, studying the word, dividing the word, uh, you know, and, and it's all significance. It's all important. But let's jump into what 2 Timothy 2.15 says. It says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. That means be busy. Be busy to present yourself approved. Uh, to, uh, you know, uh, uh, approved to God. That means you're not, you're staying on the Word. You're you're living according to the Word. You you love the Word. You study and you you know, all these things that you know to because that's what approves God. That that's that's what that's God's approval is that you're following God's Word. You're choosing to live according to God's Word. You're making decisions according to God's Word. I love it. You know, what? and and one of the prerequisites basically is you know what? <clears throat> excuse me, is rightly dividing the Word of God. So I, I love that it says, be diligent to present yourself um, approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. You know what? And there's no reason to be ashamed. There's no reason to be ashamed whenever I, I'm I'm being diligent to show myself approved. And and I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people call me. It doesn't matter what people think that I, I don't have to be ashamed because, you know, I, I know where I stand. I know what I'm doing. And I, I just love the fact that, that we don't, we can stand before God unashamed because we choose to rightly dividing the word of truth, right? Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I love this phrase, rightly dividing. And whenever you really dive in a little bit deeper, it means to analyze correctly. There's significance in this, to analyze correctly, cut straight, Within the Greek, cut straight to interpret or analyze properly, perhaps by making appropriate distinctions conceived of as cutting something in a straight line. Because that's what it does. You know, the Proverbs 15, 19 says, the way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns, but the way of the upright is a highway. You know, and whenever we build highways, you know, we're not building them to, to run thousands of miles out of uh, of the way we're we're designing them to go from point A to point B. We're making a straight path. We want to make a straight path because we want to get there as quick as possibly. We don't want to get lost. We don't want detours. We don't want distractions. And and that's what basically you know. If, if I choose not to be lazy and I'm rightly dividing the word, that means I, I'm analyzing it correctly. To analyze correctly, to cut straight. And I love what it says. 
you know that that I, I, I'm analyzing correctly. I, I want us to digest that a little bit. Just just ponder that, because so many times as as Christians we're going to the Word of God and and we believe we're doing the right thing. I, I've been here. I'm talking to myself. We, we, we believe we're doing the right thing. We're rightly dividing the word. And unfortunately, a lot of times uh, we're jumping into the word whenever we're wanting an answer. Right? When something's difficult, we're jumping into the word. When something's happening in our life, we're jumping into the word. And a lot of times whenever we're jumping into the word in cases like that, we're not properly analyzing the word, are we? Just listen to me. Listen to me. Don't tune me out. Please, please, I'm trying to help us all because I've done this myself. Is it rightly dividing the word of truth means to analyze correctly, to cut straight. You know what? That means uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm coming to God. I, I'm analyzing his word correctly. Do we understand w- what God is saying right here? To analyze his word correctly. That means what state are you coming in when you come to God's word and analyze God's word? Well, I'm trying to find out answers. I'm trying to do this. Yeah, what state are you coming in? What attitude are you coming in? Are you coming in with anger? Are you coming in with, with your interpretation? Are you coming in with your opinion? Uh, are, are, how are you coming in to analyze God's word? Are you coming in to find the answer that pleases you, to justify what you're, you're doing, your actions? Hey, there's truth here. Because too many times as Christians, we're coming in and we're rightly dividing, but we're not rightly dividing. We're, we're trying to find a, a reason, a justification, an excuse uh, to justify our actions, to justify why I'm angry, to justify why I'm fearful, to justify my lie, to justify whatever it is. And, and we're not rightly dividing because we're not, we're not analyzing correctly. We're, we're coming to God with, with an attitude of anger. Well, I don't know, understand why this is happening. I don't know. You know or you know, or we're, we're wanting our our ways, right? Not God's ways. So how are we coming? Are we coming with humility? Because that's really a key to God. Because here Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, sitting on a throne, has dominion over all things, humbled himself to come into the world to take upon him our sins, to pay the price, to give up his life, humility, to serve, not to be served, humility. How are we coming to God to analyze his word? Are we coming with humility? Are we humbling ourselves? Lord, that you know what? I have an opinion, but my opinion doesn't matter. Are we coming with the right attitudes? Are we approaching God, you know, with, with a humility, with a, a spirit of humility, with, you know what, Lord, it, you know what, I, I'm trying to cleanse my hair, my, my, my hair. I don't have no hair. I'm trying to cleanse my mind. I'm trying to, trying to come to you pure. I'm trying to come with, without my agenda, without my justification, without my excuses, without all me trying to, you know, it, it, it's not for us to interpret the word. The word's supposed to interpret us, right? It's supposed to analyze and, and, and let us know that where we're, we're wrong and where we're devi- d- uh, you know, dividing incorrectly and where, where we're deviating from. And you know, th- this is what the word does is, is the word convicts and, and leads us and guides us. But, but if we come with, look, this is the way it's going to be and I've got to justify my actions and I, it's about me and it's about what, me, 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 me and, and what I'm going to get out of it. And I, I, man, I, I, I'm, I know I blew it inside, but I've got to make it right. I've got to justify it so I don't have to come back and, and ask for forgiveness or so I don't have to repent to this individual or, or I can justify my little lie. It's just a little lie, right? How, how are we properly, rightly dividing the word of truth? Are we coming to God? Even though we come and, and we're in the midst of a situation, we're angry, we're upset, we're lonely, we're trying to figure it out. Can we come to him with humility? Lord, I don't know what you're going to tell me. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but Lord, I want your way. I want to do away with my opinions, my thoughts, my anger. My Father, God, I just come to you and, and I humble myself that it's your way and not my way. Right? See, without humility, we, we are searching to justify. Because without humility, I, 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 I'm coming to to rightly divide my way. 
my will, right? But if I come and I'm rightly dividing the word of truth with humility, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm on the wrong road and I need to turn around and I need to head the right direction. Maybe I need to change my thoughts. Maybe I need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe maybe everything is good, but maybe it's just an opportunity to, you know what, thank you, Lord, to praise him and give him honor and thanksgiving, right? How are we coming? Because we read this, rightly dividing the word of truth. That means to analyze correctly. And we know that that, that his word is... is is a path, is a light. You know, that's what it says in Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. See, he'll illuminate the direction. But too many times we're coming with our agendas or we're coming with our attitudes. We're coming, we're not coming rightly dividing. We're coming to justify and, and come up with an excuse and a reason to, to be okay with where I'm at. Rightly dividing means I'm coming to God with humility, humbleness, Lord, Lord, correct what needs to be corrected. Close the doors that needs to be closed. Open the doors that needs to be opened. See, we all have opinions, right? We all do. And opinions are okay. That's okay. But when we come to God, we, we have to submit our opinion, right? We have to submit our opinions to everyone else because, you know, our opinions creates division. God's opinion creates unity. Do you see? So if I'm coming to God, rightly dividing the word of truth, it's not about my opinion. It's not about me. It's about what do you have to say to me, God? What do I need to change? Where do I need to go? What is your way? And it says within 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. That means, you know what? Continually coming to him, reading his word, rightly dividing his word, the word of truth, rightly dividing it. That means analyzing it. That means, you know what, vengeance isn't really mine, it's God's. That means I really need to love my neighbor. That means I really need to pray for others. That means whoever gets elected in this election today, I'm going to pray for and I'm going to support because that's what God's word says, because I'm, I'm rightly dividing the truth. That means I won't have hatred. I'm not going to have anger. I, I, I can forgive my neighbors. I can forgive individuals. That means, you know, my, my life isn't mine. That means I died that I may have life because I've chose to pick up my cross. That means how you treat your, your spouses, how you treat your kids, right? Because it's not about my opinions. It's not my agenda. It's not... It, it goes right back to rightly dividing the word of God. And what does the word of God say? If I come to the word of God, what does it say that I should be as a husband? What does it say that I should be as a wife? What does it say that I should be as a parent, as a child of God? What does it say? And I should be doing this each and every day. I should be studying to show myself approved each and every day. Right? Coming to him with humility. It says in 2 Peter 1.10, it says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Right? You know, it never said that I want to go through difficult times. Right? When I choose to come rightly dividing the word, that means I'm coming to analyze correctly. That means it's going to make my path straight. That means, you know what, what? If I analyze God's word correctly and I'm rightly dividing the word, that means it's not my opinion, it's not my attitude, it's not my agenda, it's not my will, it's nothing of me, it's all of God. And what, what, does he, what does he say? He's going to make the crooked places straight. You know what does that is the word of God because I'm walking out his will and not my will. And it illuminates, it, it, makes, it, it makes this Psalm 119, 105, just, it makes it come alive that it is truly his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. That means, you know what, whenever I choose to, to come and rightly divide the word. It doesn't mean I'm not going to go through some difficult times. It doesn't mean it's not going to be challenging, but I'll never stumble because I'll see the way. I'll see the path. I'll be able to step over the stumbling blocks that the devil's trying to throw at me. I'm going to be able to discern. I'm going to have wisdom and knowledge and understanding because I'm rightly dividing. Because if I choose to, to come to God and, and I, I, I'm coming in my opinions and my ways and, and it's about me and I'm not humble, then you know I'm going to stumble. That, that, man, someone needs to tweet that. If you're not humble, you're going to stumble. Isn't it true? Because your ways is going to be blocks and boulders and mountains and Goliaths that you're going to fall to. 
But whenever I come and I'm humble and I choose me, choose to, to rightly divide the word, that means humility. It's not my way, it's God. Lord, whatever needs to be done, Lord, it's your way. And, and what does it say in Proverbs 3, 6? It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Then, what, are you, what are you doing? You're, you're acknowledging his way, his will. So when I come to rightly divide the word of truth, that means I acknowledge, Lord, it's your way. Your opinion matters, not mine. Your agenda matters, not mine. Your will matters, not mine. Your word, the truth matters, not mine. That means if your word says this, but my emotions and feelings say something different, I, I have to put my emotions and feelings under submission to your word. Because that's truly rightly dividing, right? I want this and I'm going to be this and, and this is the way it's going to be. Well, that, but God said something different. Well, you know what? Submit. If you're going to rightly divide the word, that means you're going to submit to God's word. It means you're going to submit to his will. That means, you know what? The house is going to be or, in order to, according to God's word. Right? Your life. Your home. Your attitude. Your opinion. So whenever we come to God, we're coming in humility. So that means instead of expecting to be served, maybe we serve. What would it look like if we came to God, rightly dividing the word in humility? I bet it would change our lives to where now we go out and we love our neighbors. And your spouse is your neighbor. Your kids are your neighbors. Your, your enemy is your neighbor, right? And, and what if we served each other? Right? What, what if we did? It's not about what I get out of it. See, that's the problem. Is we don't come rightly dividing the word of truth because it's about what I can get out of it. Instead of, you know, what can God get out of it? Lord, I want this. How many times our prayer life is about what we can get out of it? Lord, I want this. I want this new house. I want this car. I want this bill paid off. I want this. I want this. Instead of God, you know what? I, I'm yours. You purchased me with the price and the price was your blood, Jesus. Your blood. I'm purchased. I'm not even mine. What do you want me to do today? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to love on? Who do you want me to preach the gospel to? Who do you want me to serve? Rightly dividing the word of truth, right? How we come to God matters. The book, our Bible, I just... I've been studying and doing a lot of different things, and I tell you what, there's been a lot of confirmation with other individuals that, you know, just within my heart to where the church needs to be and where we're going and what we're doing and, and, and where it starts is with humility. It's not about us. It's about God. And in order to rightly divide the truth, in order to analyze correctly, in order to cut straight right through, that means I have to be humble. And I have to come to God with humility in order to rightly divide the word of the truth or else I'm adding myself into the word instead of being changed. I can never change the word, right? I think I can, but I never can. That's pride. So we have to humble ourselves and understand, you know what, the word, it's not here for me to change the word of God. It's here for me to be changed by the word of God but it takes me to be humble. And I love this scripture, Matthew 7, 14. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Think about that. Because the world's full of pride. I have pride. And it scares me to have pride. And I have to humble myself each and every day. Because I want to come to God, not about me, but about Him. What do you have for me today to do that you may be glorified? Humility is everything. Can we come to God rightly dividing the word of truth with humility? It's not about me. It's not about my agenda. It's not about my opinion. It's not about my heart. It's not about my needs. It's not about my wants. God, 
I come to you. I want your direction. I acknowledge you. And you said if I acknowledge you, you're going to direct my paths. That's what it says in Proverbs, a book of wisdom. So I acknowledge you. I come before you. I bow down to you. I serve you. It's not my will. It's your will. Lead me, guide me, and direct me. And if we do that, we'll never be ashamed. Right? We'll never stumble. And it'll be an incredible, incredible relationship with God when we choose to allow humility to come in. Right? Think about it. Lucifer didn't go. Satan himself didn't go to God with humility. He came, not rightly dividing the truth of God, the truth of the word of truth. He came with his agenda, his opinion, his wants, his desires. Then he was casted out of the presence of God. I want when you come to God to rightly divide the word, to have an experience, to have, have a moment with God that was going to change your life each and every time you enter in your prayer closet, each and every time you open up the word of God. I want you to have an experience like you never had before. And you know how it does? What, what, what it takes, the main ingredients, is to come to him with humility, being humble, bow down to him, and surrender, acknowledge him. Lord, it's about you. And I'm telling you, you'll be rightly dividing the word of truth. And you'll have a Shekinah whole experience, Shekinah glory experience, like you've never had before until we humble ourselves. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. That's what I want for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to have PDJ to be able to come and break open the word. And we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come and rightly divide the word of truth, Father God. Lord, and I pray, Father God, as we come to, to do this and come before you, that, Father God, we come with an attitude of gratitude, that we have an attitude of humility, that, Father God, Lord, we, we are grateful for everything that we have. We're grateful for everything that we shall not have no wants, Father God. I want nothing because there's no need, no want just to be humble and be humbled before you, to come with all humility, Father God. Surrender, Father God. Lord, that we can have an experience with your word, have an experience with you, a face-to-face -face encounter, and it starts to with humility. It starts to be humble, Father God. So, Lord, this is what I pray upon each and every one of us, Father God. Lord, that we approach you. Father God, we approach you to analyze your word correctly with humility. Not our agendas, not our wants, not our desires. But what can we do for you? Humility. Father God, we are here for you. We are your hands and your feet. Father God, we want, Father God, an experience with you like we've never had before. So, Father God, we come to you. We surrender our will for your will. We come humble. We come with humility, Father God. Lord, in order to divide the word of truth, that we may know your purpose and your plan for our lives, that we'll be able to walk out each and every day glorifying your name. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, guys. It's deep. And we can even go further. I'm just telling you, God is good. And let's come to him in humility. Amen. And if we can come to him with humility, he's going to teach us to come to others with humility. Knowing that we've all fallen short. That we can be like the two sons of Lot. That we can cover each other's nakedness. And pray and pick up each other's burdens and love each other. And not have agendas. But just the desire to glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. Love you guys. That's the PDJ for the day. Uh, let me just tell you, I'm enjoying this weather that's right here in Florida. We woke up the 54 degree weather. Awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. But before that, this is election day. If you have not voted, make sure you go out and vote. It's important. It's important. Your vote matters. Amen. Your vote matters. God has it, I know. But we're the hands and feet of God. Your vote matters. Go out and exercise your right to vote. 
Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining me for PDJ Prayer, Devotion, and Journaling. And what we will do, we will see you in, not Wednesday, because there's no Wednesday night services for November and December, but I will see you back here Thursday morning for prayer. That's 7.30, Thursday morning for prayer. Make sure you submit your prayer request. Go to peakworship.com, select the praying hands, submit your prayer request. I want to be praying with you. I want to be believing with you. God is doing miracles. I'm telling you, reports are coming in. Miracles are coming in. Ah, it's just awesome, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys have a great day, and we will see you Thursday morning.